kind of early in the season and it was cold. I was here last night in this park camping out and uh, had the heat going and uh, it's always a mystery uh, on how much propane you've got and uh, you know propane vaporizes the liquid and it uh, it boils at like room temperature or whatever and it creates pressure so pressure meters on these are not always accurate I've heard mixed reviews and uh, you know, the, the cost-free way to test how much propane is in here is to pour a bucket of hot water on here and run your hand down the side. And where the liquid is will be cold and where the, uh, where the gas is will, uh, will heat up just for a few seconds and you can check it. But there is another solution. And uh, somebody alerted me to this uh, Mopeak, Mopeak? Little gizmo. And this is a little transmitter and what you do is you put this under your propane tank. Let me stick it on there. It goes on with a magnet. And you just stick that on your tank. And uh, it has a Bluetooth transmitter in it. And you uh, get out your phone. You get out your phone, you fire up this application. This, uh, and you select your tank. And it shows me that I have four and a half inches of propane left in here. And it's really, it's designed for a larger tank. So you can see from this image, you know, it shows a larger tank. And uh, that's what it's for. So rather than use the percentage full and all that, I, I talked to the company. They were very helpful. I got a guy on the phone immediately and he told me... Uh, just use the inches of propane. And you can use this on a horizontal tank because it's showing you the inches of propane. And uh, i give you an idea. So um, I'm still experimenting with it. It seems to be working quite well, no problems. And uh, I ran out of propane when it said I had propane and I've cross-checked it with hot water and it seems to be uh, accurate. So this is the transmitter and these two magnets hold it onto the tank and uh, this little spot in the middle is where it does the reading. Uh, they say if you have an irregular shaped tank, you can put some kind of dielectric grease on here to make the contact better or a curved surface or something. You know, I haven't tested it on all those. They also claim you can use this on those Coleman one pound propane bottles. I, you can just give those a shake though and tell how much is in them. Uh, so uh, cute little device, I'm gonna keep it. Uh, I'll have a link in the bottom of my videos for, uh, for this and other things. Heat, I wanted to talk about heat because I've been noodling around on this and uh, there's three main options for me. Hey, you can see Mr. Heater here is putting out heat right here. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, he's uh, running right now, heating up this little bubble in here for me to work in. And uh, you know, heat's a wonderful thing. It uh, makes winter camping a lot nicer and uh, comfort is great, you know. So by a long shot, probably Mr. Heater is one of the most popular heaters that I've seen uh, when I look around on the web, you know, in videos and things like that. Everybody seems to be using Mr. Heater, and including me. I use Mr. Heater, Mr. Buddy, Little Buddy, and they're good. Uh, they provide heat, but where they stink is they're really expensive to run, okay? I, I'm not trying to offend anybody. I have to talk about three heating systems. Uh, propane, Mr. Heater, the Propex, which is what I'm using in this trailer, and diesel heaters. Um, I get an awful lot of information from people that have an opinion but don't own diesel heaters, so I'm hoping to hear from some responsible diesel heater users. I know that they are probably good. Their primary feature seems to be that they're cheap, and I have no problem with that. I mean, I paid almost a thousand bucks to have my heater installed here. Uh, but there's some other things to consider. Uh, I, I really rate them on a couple of different features. One is cost of operation. You know, initial purchase price is important, but cost of operation is, is something that, you know, has to be considered uh, over the long haul, especially with this guy. He'll take you right to the poorhouse. Uh, so, and then uh, there's reliability is another main feature for me. I'm a plug and play guy. I just want to turn it on and I want it to run. I don't want to be, uh, fooling around with anything. Okay, so let's look at Mr. Heater. Since he's so popular, and he's such a, he's a, not the best looking guy, but he sure is popular. So, 
diesel fuel is about three dollars a gallon give or take depends on what point in time you're measuring it propane is about a dollar a pound now you measure propane in two ways pounds and gallons so I'm gonna use pounds because that's uh, what I prefer to use and I'm making this video so uh, pound of propane is about a dollar gallon of propane is about four dollars and twenty cents a little bigger okay now put out a lot of heat uh, when you consider mr. heater when I consider them you know he's a carry around portable heater you know you can use them in a duck blind if you're out duck hunting you can use them for uh, you know your garage or out somewhere uh, there's been a lot of chatter about safety and non-safety and blah 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 but you know when people are using them so um, when you buy mr. heater you got to buy these propane tanks and uh, the Coleman ones sell anywhere from uh, about 350 on Walmart Walmart was the best deal I found on them to five dollars in a camping sporting goods store or more so that's a lot five bucks a pound when you can buy propane for a dollar a pound well the simple solution is to refill these things, right? There's a little gizmo you buy and you hook it on here and it'll inject propane. Well, I'm going to show you what I did. I bought a, something slightly different. It allows you to bleed the gas out when you're putting the propane liquid in. You, can, you know, if you're just shooting gas in here without a bleeder valve, then you're, you're really not getting what you're paid for, okay? Empty the Flame King canister with the bleeder valve weighs 1.64 pounds one pound six point four ounces now this thing separates itself from other propane tanks because it uh, it has a bleeder valve up here for when you fill it so flame king gives you this apparatus here for filling your tank this end goes on the propane tank I have a uh, a five pound propane tank here it's all I've got so uh, that's what I'm going to use okay I'm going to uh, I released the valve, no propane's going into it, but now I'm going to release the bleeder valve. And that's going to vent gas from the propane tank here, this green tank, and allow liquid to come in, which is what I want. It's getting quite cold. Okay, now it's starting to vent off means we're approaching the liquid state okay so uh, that's how it works so I got just over a pound of propane in here it went from 1.6 pounds to uh, 2 pounds 7.5 ounces so that's a big improvement uh, and uh, I'd have to say the thing works on the negative side you have to have this little Allen wrench and it's taped on here uh, not 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 the ideal solution i'd rather just a screwdriver head or something like that the uh these tanks i had to buy the tank separately and uh it's designed to be refilled uh it's made by flame somebody uh flame king okay i, I didn't make up the name they did uh so flame king when you put the propane in you open a valve and it will rise up to a little tube and that will uh, prevent you from overfilling it. You don't want to overfill these things. 80% capacity is what they hold. You overfill them, you put that out in the sun, you could have some serious problems. I mean, safety problems, like it could explode. So, uh, so the problem with Mr. Heater, and he's a nice guy, I'm gonna put him down a little lower for higher efficiency. Oh yeah, I'll warm those buns. Uh, the main reason Mr. Heater is problematic for me is he doesn't have a thermostat he's got two speeds on and off and in the small trailer like I'm using here uh, that's too much uh, he's a several four or five thousand BTUs it's just too much and I see in videos other people with the doors to their RVs open talking about how great mr. heater is they're wasting heat I mean that's money flying out the window You know, you, you want the right, I want the right amount of heat. I don't want, you know, too much heat and I don't want too little heat. I, I just want perfect. So, because he has no thermostat, he runs all the time. One pound of propane here will burn for, uh, 
for four hours. So that means uh, on an eight hour night, I'm, I'm typically in a trailer like 10 hours a night. That means, you know, 10 hours, you're into two and a half of these things. And at five bucks a pound, if you're paying that, and I don't think you are, I hope you're not, you know, you're into uh, 17, 18 bucks for one night's worth of heat. That's crazy. You know, if you live in an RV, uh, that's a lot of money to be forking out for these things. And uh, I put all these heaters with no thermostat, you know, the Wave or whatever those are. There's a whole bunch of them out there. They're all very good. You know, they serve a need in their initial cheap startup price. 60 bucks for this thing, 50 bucks. Uh, very cheap to start, but boy, are you going to pay uh, in fuel prices. Even if you go to refilling these yourself at a dollar a pound, uh, that's two, two, three, two fifty, three dollars a night. You're going to be paying for heat. Now, maybe that sounds good, but if you live in a vehicle, you know, for uh, for thirty days, uh, it's not so good. Uh, you're putting a lot of money into your heat, and you're just burning your money. So they have their place; they're good, but they're expensive. Yeah, Mr. Heaters, fifty-five dollars. She wanted a cheaper heaters around. This guy right here. They should call him Mr. Thirsty because he's so hungry for fuel. Uh, the other problem with these things is um, is moisture. Now, a lot of people discount this; they don't think it's important. I can tell you firsthand in my trailer when I was using this thing, it was uh, it gets pretty damp in there. It's a small space. One pound of propane gives off twenty ounces of water. So if you're burning two and a half of these uh, a night, that's forty, fifty ounces of water you're putting in. That's uh, almost two quarts. You know, I mean, that's uh, you're getting up there, a quart and a half. Plus you're breathing. That's another sixteen ounces of water. So we're talking uh, two quarts of water going into your RV every night, and uh, you know it's going to run down the walls, on the windows, and all that. And you know maybe that's tolerable for you, but it wasn't for me. I'd get out of this thing and I go to call, you know, to go to the bathroom. And in cold weather, I'm damp. I mean, my clothing is damp. The windows are dripping. They're fogged up. Again, if you choose that, that's up to you. You know, that's uh, that's your choice. Uh, but uh, things start to get wet, and I start to get concerned when the mattress and the sleeping bag get damp and all that. And I got to dry them out. And blah, blah, blah. So it's uh, it's a pain in the neck. Uh, so cheap purchase price, expensive run price. Now, let me compare that to the Propex. So the Propex is a propane heater, puts out uh, about 6,500 BTUs, has a thermostat, has a fan, right? requires energy. This requires no fan, no nothing. It just puts out heat. The Propex burns 2.37 grams of propane a minute. Burns a little more. But the, Pro the Propex has a thermostat. In one hour at 20 degrees, this will burn a quarter pound of fuel. In one hour at 20 degrees outside, the Propex will only run for 12 minutes. You know, it cycles on and off. And over nine hours, it'll burn about a half a pound of fuel. Okay, so. This guy, you know, the Propex will burn in, in 10 hours. It'll, it'll burn just over a half a pound of fuel. This guy will burn two and a half pounds of fuel. So over a period of time, the Propex is going to pay for itself in saved fuel. So especially if you're a full-timer, that's a consideration. Um, and, you know, I found the Propex, you know, maintenance-free. Uh, it just works. You know, just turn it on. And it, uh, it seems to work very well. I, I scoured, you know, obviously I don't go to any Propex convention, but I scoured YouTube and the web looking for complaints about the Propex heater. And I, I really didn't find any. Um, nobody had anything bad to say about it other than the initial purchase price. But that's more than made up for by the fuel price, if you're, especially if you're a full-timer, pays for itself in a few months. I'm assuming that you know you use your heater 10 hours a night. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. Okay, don't get mad at me. This is my analysis of these three heaters. Uh, thermostat's a critical thing if you want to save money. Uh, the Propex is a 2,000 watt heater, pretty close to 2,000 watts. And diesel heaters are about 2,000 watts. I don't look, look up the, uh, 
the wattage on this. Uh, yeah, this guy puts out 4,500 BTUs, Mr. Heater, and it's uh, 1,319 watts, so it's a little smaller. If you're using this heater 10 hours a night with $5 propane canisters, that's 1250 a night you're spending for heat. That's $375 a month. That's pretty expensive, so not the best choice for, uh, for, um, for, for cost savings. Now, if you go with refuelable tanks or a large tank and you're paying a dollar a pound, uh, this would cost you about $250 a night for 10 hours a night. That's about $75 a month. And uh, over a year, that's at a dollar a pound. Over a year, that would be close to $900. It would pay for the Propex heater using these heaters. That's with no thermostat. So crunch the numbers yourself and see. You know, it's uh, Propex uh, is way more efficient on uh, on fuel. Now, everybody's darling are diesel heaters, and they are cheap. $200, they run on diesel fuel. For me, it was not a good match. I didn't want to add another fuel to my, uh, to my, uh, a liquid fuel to this, uh, this teardrop trailer. I, it just didn't make sense for me. I already have propane. I have a propane tank on the front. Why not burn propane? It's just simple. Keep it simple. Plus, the, uh, the Propex burns really clean and it's maintenance free. Now, this is anecdotal. It's not based on data or research. It's the only research is me looking into these things. And what I found is lots and lots of complaints. Maybe it's just the complainers who get on YouTube. But I found lots and lots of complaints about, uh, about diesel heaters. And one was smoke. That probably it indicates that they're not running right, right? So uh, something's wrong there. But there's a lot of people complaining about smoke with these things. The noise... It's about on a par with uh, the Propex, uh, maybe a little bit noisier. But it seemed that an awful lot of people are tearing these things down. Uh, on a regular basis, maybe they're not using them correctly, but an awful lot of people, a lot of videos on there about disassembling these things and uh, cleaning out the soot. And probably soot's an indicator that something's wrong, but an awful lot of people in gloves blowing smoke out of their mouth, you know, in cold weather in their, in their RVs, fixing these things, opening them up and showing soot and scraping the soot out into a piece of paper. You know, I don't want that. You may want it. You may be good with it. You know, so, so consider that. I mean, they, how good are they? I'm sure they're good. A lot of people are using them. Truck drivers use them for their, uh, to cool, to heat their cabs and, uh, and they seem to work out good. Maybe some are better than others. Maybe some of them stink. I don't know. The other thing for me was that they use 10 amps of power when the glow plugs lit. Uh, when they start up, a glow plug heats up, use a lot of juice, you know, the thing lights, it runs for a while, then the glow plug goes on for the shutdown. But uh, I just don't have that kind of energy to spare, and I'm not interested in doing that. So, um, you know, don't respond and say, hey, mine works good. Give me some data, you know, give me some information on it. Who knows what you're doing with it? So um, I, I would think that diesel heaters would need a scrutinous look. If you're going to consider one, uh, try and look up your model on YouTube, see how it is, see if it's got a good rating, uh, see if it's good. You know, you're dealing with a fuel pump now. And uh, there is a guy on there who is really, really good uh, with diesel heaters. I have a link below for Peter Bruce. He shows electrical consumption for his. I think it was a slightly higher wattage, but it was considerable. And. Uh, you know, that might be fine for you. You might have a big, huge battery array, and you're all happy with it, and that could be a good thing. You know, normally when I sleep, um, I'll turn the heat either very low. If it's, you know, very cold out, I'll turn the heat very low and let it run, or I'll turn it off. So, you know, I use 10 hours as a measure uh, of running heat and the cost associated with it, just so you would know. I do hang out in the trailer at night and just love it, you know, when it's warm in there. It's, uh, it's pretty good. It's a very comfortable uh, place to, uh, to hang out. So, yeah, for 10 hours, the 
The Propex only cost 62 cents to run for 10 hours. That's a big difference compared to Mr. Eater. Uh, so you can uh, do the crunch the numbers and see how long uh, it would take for the Propex to pay for itself in saved propane. I think his customer support was pretty good on Propex. I've emailed them a few times and gotten good uh, information from them. Pretty, you know, just email support. Yeah, there's a 13-part series on diesel, he diesel heater maintenance. I'll put a link in the bottom for that. It shows everything about the diesel heaters, how to take it apart and everything. It's a very good uh, tutorial on diesel heaters if you're thinking of going in that route. So that was all I had to say. I didn't do this to piss people off and say, you know, diesel heaters are no good or anything. I'm sure they're, you know, they're fine for people who need them. You know, I'm, I'm partial to the Propex. I find it very cost effective to use, trouble free, easy. Mr. Heater, Mr. Buddy, little buddy, I use those, you know, when I need them. And uh, I just don't, I'm just a little tired of people saying, oh, you know, you should consider a diesel heater because they're cheap with no supporting data. I want simplicity and I want reliability. So I'm pretty happy with what I've got. I hope you're happy if you have a diesel heater and I hope it's running well.